3.06 is the time, and you know what that music means. It's not like any other hour of Kale & Company throughout the week. It's, it's unique. It's unique unto itself. It is Ask Coach Carol here on The Pulse. Ask Coach Carol Phillips, author of 52 Simple Ways to Health. And in fact, rumor has it that you're yes. going to give away a copy of the book today on I the show. I am. I am. Um, How about that? Yeah, it's exciting. So whoever calls in Autogra first. Autographed. Autographed. How about absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have one of those. You do? I do. You yes, do. I do. I one do. of the very first. That's true. Because you were true. my first radio interview ever. How about that? Ever. Ever. And e -A -H. Now, and, and now look what's become of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm very busy. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a so good thing. I would love a listener to call in today and join in the conversation or ask a question of our guests uh, once we get rolling in that area. Um, but first, I want to mention that uh, the latest with my book is I'm taking the audio book and I'm uploading it to a website that provides digital download cards. Ah, so it's a little bit too high tech for me. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that. Yeah, okay, go buy that again. <laughs> well, it's it's neat. Um, it's going to be more uh, easily available for companies mm -hmm. for their employees, and it kind of looks like I haven't seen it yet, but um, kind of like a credit card with a sleeve that has the cover of my book. Yeah. And what people do is they take it, they go to the website, they punch in the code on the back of the card. And they can download my audiobook onto their device. Nice. So easy peasy. I so guess that's, so. That's really exciting. So. so for people who want an option other than the paper paperback, that'll be great. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to mention that I have a class coming up at Good Life Program and Events, 254 North State Street in Concord. Good Life Program and Events offers classes and day trips to people 50 and over. My next class is Thursday, August 11th, from 1 to 2.30, and we would be talking about, um, the, well, the topic is exercise is not a four-letter word. So the components of a good exercise program and, you know, making it fun. Exercise isn't boring. It's not supposed it, to be. It should not be. So mm -hmm. teaching people how to make it fun. So that's Thursday, August 11th, from 1 to 2.30, Good Life Program and Events, 254 North State Street, Unit L, uh, it's in the Smokestack building. And if people want to register, they can call 603-228-6630. Uh, it's $15 for the class. Or you can get more information at goodlifenewhampshire.org. Outstanding. Well done. Yeah, looking forward to that class. Uh, It'll be fun. All right. Exercise is not a four-letter word. It absolutely is so not. So it's not work, right? No, the body's designed to move. Uh, yes. And we're designed to have fun. It shouldn't be a chore. It shouldn't be boring. That's true. If you don't like exercise, you're, you're, you need to pick a new activity. Very Try good. something new. All tai, right. Tai Chi. Are you, you're looking at me. I think you're trying to give me a message here. <laughs> no, I'm Or triathlon. We could try that one for 3 to 15-year-olds. That's, that, that's, that's a level yeah, I'd be yeah. There you go. I was yeah. listening to that. that I can swim 50, exciting. dog paddle 50 yards, I think. You think yeah. so? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. longer than you think. I know. 50 yards. <laughs> the bike part sounded uh, a little uh, challenging. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, what, what else is on your agenda, Carol? At any rate, I would love to introduce um, our guest today. We have Alyssa Thompson from Breathe New Hampshire. She's the director of programs. And we're going to be talking about COPD and some great events that they have coming up. So welcome, Alyssa. How are you? Thank you, Carol. Thank you for having me. Um, tell us a little bit about what Breathe New Hampshire does. So Breathe New Hampshire, we are actually the state's oldest public health agency, and we work in the area of lung disease and lung conditions and essentially looking to eliminate lung disease while also helping to improve the quality of life for those living with a lung condition or lung disease. Um, and um, so you're fairly new there. I am. I started earlier this year, so mm -hmm. jumping right into some of the work that we're doing, um, some of the areas specifically with COPD and some of the other uh, programs that we have going. Mm -hmm. So what's your, the, 
the scope of what you do over there? Um, so right now we're actually in the process of implementing our COPD state plan. Um, and so really what that means is we are trying to get the word out, first of all, to raise awareness about what COPD is. Um, about 85,000 people in New Hampshire have COPD. Another 85,000 are estimated to have it but are undiagnosed and don't know it yet. So first of all, it's just part of raising the awareness and then also providing tools and resources to healthcare providers um, because it really starts there with the doctors being able to properly diagnose and manage the disease. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't know, what is COPD? Right. So COPD, which is also um, known as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it really is a disease of the lungs where it's also called chronic bronchitis or emphysema, but it really just makes it difficult to breathe. And so the airways are partially blocked. And so a lot of people, you know, they're coughing, they're wheezing, they cannot catch their breath or take a really deep breath. Um, and it's a very serious lung disease, and it is chronic. And breathing something we most of us take for granted until something happens. Absolutely. So it's, it's great work that you do. Um, tell us about the new yoga classes that you have. So that's very exciting. Um, what we started to do is recognize, of course, yoga has been demonstrated to really have a lot of benefits for people, not only just for their overall health and wellness, but also for those with a chronic condition like COPD. So we partnered with a local yoga studio here in Manchester called Yoga Balance, and we are offering a six-week series, Yoga for COPD. And it's really a great partnership. The instructor has a connection to COPD, actually. Um, her husband lives with COPD. So it was a really great fit for us to work with them. It's a six-week series. It's $5 per class. And again, the classes are held over at Yoga Balance off Hooksett Road. Mm -hmm. And what's the contact information if people are interested in participating? So they would contact us at Breathe New Hampshire. So they could contact us at 669-2411 or they could go on to our website, breathenh.org. Okay, and the 800 number is 1-800-835-8647. So those are, the classes are scheduled for Mondays, 1045 to 1130 a.m., starting on July 25th, correct? Correct, and they run through the end of August, so August 29th is the last class. And there's so many benefits of yoga. Mentally, physically, it, it forces people to slow down in this crazy, busy, stressed out world we live in. Um, you know, some people, they try yoga just for the mental aspect. Absolutely. And I think the other benefit, of course, to yoga is that it is all about the breath and the breathing. And so for the individuals living with COPD to learn some of these breathing techniques through yoga, that helps them control and manage their own breathing. Mm -hmm. So it's very important as well. That's great. And then they get to socialize at the same time. And being with other people who might be dealing with the same condition is hugely important because I'm sure a lot of these people in their day-to-day -day life, they're the only person, you know, maybe in their whole family or their circle of friends who are dealing with this. And I'm sure most of us who take breathing for granted most of the time can't relate to the difficulties that they deal with all the time. Right, absolutely. You know, anytime there's activities where people can get out and reduce isolation and meet others that get it, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, I think those are critically important. So we're, we're happy to, you know, try the yoga and get people out. Trying something new also with a group of people that, you know, are dealing with some of the same things. So I think that was a big aspect why we wanted to try the yoga, was many people had shared that they would otherwise be intimidated to maybe just try yoga on their own, but to do it in a group setting with others that get it mm -hmm. um, is a really important thing for them. And to have an instructor who knows firsthand, you know, being around somebody who's dealing with that. Exactly. That can make a big difference exactly. also. Exactly. Terrific. Um, tell us about the support group that's offered at Breathe New Hampshire, because I think that's so important when people, especially if they're diagnosed unexpectedly, and then they discover that, you know, maybe they just thought they had a cold or... You know, then they go to the doctor and they get tested and they find out now they're dealing with something that's not going to be going away in three days. So, again, the support group is, is vitally important for people, um, whether they're new to the disease or they've been living with it for a long time. Again, it's getting people together that can maybe share strategies and new information um, and to empower them to help them cope and manage their disease. So we started a support group. It's actually uh, volunteer-led. So there's two volunteers that have COPD. They facilitate the group, and it meets every month uh, at Breathe New Hampshire in Manchester. 
Um, it's every it's the second Wednesday of the month from one to two thirty. And it's open to friends and family, too. And so that's another aspect of this disease, is it's not only impacting and affecting the individual living with COPD, but it impacts the whole family, really. So we do offer the support to the family members as well and the caregivers. Yeah, that's important, too, because the caregivers sometimes are more exhausted because they have so much to do. All of a sudden, they're trying to work full time and take care of somebody. So that's great that the family's included also. Yeah, and it helps them also learn about maybe new resources that they didn't know about and new information. Um, maybe the person living with COPD doesn't want to share all of the information with them, so it makes them also increase their understanding of the disease because that's also another big part of it is there's a lot of misunderstanding about what COPD is. And Well, what are, um, because I'm sitting here, I'm wondering, well, okay, emphysema, I recognize that. So I would think you could be easily frustrated if you're trying to be married or have a family member who has COPD and they like can't do things they used to, but you're and you're like, well, yeah, but I want to do them. So, what are some of the the myth busting that that well, we I need think to do? you know, there's um, with COPD, people have you know shortness of breath doing daily activities. So, doing the day to day things maybe with their families that they used to be able to do, they can no longer do, and so there can be a level of frustration not only on their part but certainly for their family members that say, come on, you can keep up with us and. Um, so I think that there's a lot of um, benefit for the family members to also be around other activities and other groups where they can see that not only they're getting support and resources, but mm -hmm. also getting a better idea of this is a pretty serious disease. And so, um, you know, I think it's helpful for them to sort of recognize what they can do to help their family member and maybe reduce some of the frustration on both parts. Yeah, that's a great point because, you know, a family member might be getting frustrated thinking, well, are they just not really trying hard enough? Yeah, or, it's like, you know, well, if you ate better, if you rested, or if you just tried hard, you'd be able to keep up with me. Right. Why are you not doing it? And right. we've heard that, actually, from people yeah. in our support group where their family members say, you know, you should get out hiking, you should be more active, you should do more of this. And one of the things that... Um, many people with COPD, COPD participate in is pulmonary rehabilitation, which is actually um, run through most hospitals. And it's helping them to exercise and realizing that actually the more that they exercise, it will improve their lung function and mm -hmm. hopefully help them to breathe a little bit easier. And so again, it is sort of changing that mindset of, I can't even get off the couch. What do you mean you want me to exercise and do anything? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's also a, an important part for family members to recognize is that they can do things, but it might just not be the way that they used to do them or what the family member expects of them to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to take a second and invite callers, um, listeners to call in 1-866-823-1077. If you have a question for Alyssa or you want to um, share some information that might help other listeners, and the first caller today will get a free copy of my book, 52 Simple Ways to Health. So um, give Alyssa a call. Um, that's that's great. And, you know, I was thinking for the support group, it's good for family members to hear other people who are dealing with these issues because maybe they communicate better, you know, than the person's spouse. And then maybe some of the caregivers, their real frustration is that they're not able to do as much with their spouse than they used to. And it's just coming out in a different way. Right. So the support group, I'm sure, is a great area for people to be able to really relate and hear from other people who are dealing with it also. Exactly. And it's also a great um, opportunity for people to share resources and information. So a lot of times they'll talk about, you know, maybe what they're dealing with with their oxygen supplier or the doctor that they're seeing. So it's just good information all around that people are sharing. And, you know, even interesting in the greater Manchester area, um, many of the support group members go to a lot of the same doctors, but some of them don't. And so it's even just you know, you think that they would all know who some of the key resources would be. And um, so it's really neat to see them sharing information with each other and learning from each other, really. Mm -hmm. Now, do you make any kind of referrals for the emotional impact that has on people? Like you could have depression and then you get substance abuse issues or lethargy. I mean, it just snowballs. So does um, Breathe New Hampshire offer referrals or is it through that networking with other people? Right. We do not offer referrals in that sense. But to your point, um, certainly uh, people with COPD are 
at a higher risk of depression. Mm -hmm. So again, through the support group, it's helping to reduce that isolation and also maybe relate to other people that are going through similar challenges of living with the disease. Um, so no, we don't refer those types of things, but again, just the sharing of information and resources is beneficial for people attending. So what, what are the symptoms? Uh, you, you mentioned that there are many cases undiagnosed uh, even here in New Hampshire. So, so what are the symptoms? Sure. So people uh, typically will have coughing a lot, uh, sometimes known as a smoker's cough even, mm -hmm. wheezing, shortness of breath, and again, mentioning earlier, um, just doing daily activities and not being able to catch their breath. And also, um, I should mention that COPD is, by and large, preventable. Um, one of the major risk factors for COPD is unfortunately smoking or a history of smoking. So, you know, I've met people that they quit years and years ago and they've had COPD and they've been diagnosed. So even if, you know, you smoked for a long time and you quit years ago, the consequences are still there. And so, um, so smoking is one of the, the major risk factors. And also, if someone has had long-term exposure to pollutants or sure. any dust or chemicals um, over the long term, that can also put them at risk. And then there's also a small amount of people with um, COPD that have it from a genetic deficiency. So, um, But by and large, it's really smoking, which is preventable. So that's another thing at Breathe New Hampshire uh, that we really are working towards is preventing young people and youth from smoking. Yeah, I just shared something on um, Facebook. I think it was yesterday. I put it on my um, author page. But it was a, a little video where they actually had um, a healthy set of human lungs, and they put it in this container. And I think they had, was it, it was like four cigarettes they pumped into this container. And then they kind of dissected it after and showing how much damage and how much tar was stuck in the lungs. Just with four cigarettes? Yeah, I think it was four cigarettes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So people can go to Facebook and wow. look at my page and, and watch the video. But it was just, you know, it's amazing how hard the body works to constantly try to heal itself. Because, you know, there's always somebody who will say... Well, you know, I had an uncle who lived to be 95, and he smoked every day since he was 10 years old. Well, you know, that's uh, rare, you know, and the person probably didn't have a high quality of life. Yes. Well, and oftentimes, too, you know, somebody might have some of the symptoms, but unless it's really, really impacting their daily life, it might not be enough to prompt them to go to the doctor's. Um, to maybe get tested if they have COPD. Right, or and slowly over time, they, you know, slowly their body changes and they just accept it. Just like people who have sleep apnea and then they go for a sleep study and then, you know, if they start using the, the, the CPAP and they get the right amount of oxygen and then they say, I had no idea how most people actually feel. I didn't know I was supposed to feel like this. I, was, I got so used to feeling the other way, I thought that was normal. So I'm sure it's the same with breathing issues. Yeah, of course. Many people feel like, oh, it's just part of the aging process. I'm getting older. Of course, I can't keep up and maybe do the things I used to do. Or um, So that is part of the issue, too, with the public awareness. And, and maybe there are people out there that um, do have a history of smoking or have been exposed to certain chemicals, and they are um, maybe them or their loved one have some of the symptoms, but they haven't really quite connected the dots or gone to the doctors about it. And so, and that's, that's really, um, you know, the biggest challenge is that there's so many people that have COPD, but they don't know it. So, Well, what's an age range? Because I know someone who's like just turned 30 and she's got that chronic smoker's cough. She works in a factory without, you know, a mask or very poor ventilation. And I'm like, I'm looking like you're only 30 and you're coughing like an old man, you know, like my grandfather, you know. Mm. So what is an age range? So typically over 40, um, but of course for many people the disease doesn't progress and maybe get more severe until they're maybe in their 50s or 60s or even 70s. Um, and it's also interesting to note that more women than men are affected by COPD. And in fact, COPD kills more women than breast cancer and diabetes combined. So it's wow. really, you know, it is the third leading cause of death in the U.S., second leading cause of disability, and yet there's so much mystery around mm -hmm. what it is and who it affects. So, And I'm sure there's people who they don't want to go to the doctor because they're afraid that sure. they do have it, they don't want to be diagnosed, mm -hmm. or they don't, want to, they don't want to hear from one more person that they should be quitting smoking. 
So what are some of the benefits of people making that phone call and making the appointment or coming in for a screening? Well, you know, once they do go to their doctors and have that conversation and, um, you know, if they are at risk and they, the doctor does decide to test them for COPD, then they can start to be treated and manage the disease properly, which is key for helping them breathe better and essentially have better health outcomes and quality of life. Um, they can get connected to pulmonary rehabilitation, which is one of the evidence-based treatment options. Perhaps they need supplemental oxygen. So there's all sort of things that um, once they have the intervention of a doctor or healthcare provider team, mm -hmm. that will really help them, you know, live better and hopefully live a little bit longer. Um, so again, it is, a, it is a chronic illness. And I think to your point, Carol, that there are a lot of people that maybe don't want to go to the doctors for fear of getting a diagnosis and then what? Um, right. so, or a worse diagnosis in their minds, you know, the big C word. Right. Well, and many right. people, too, mm -hmm. also there is that shame involved with they were a smoker. And mm -hmm. so, you know, having to maybe deal with that, whether it's to quit smoking, because mm -hmm. the doctor will probably tell them they should quit, um, or in some cases, um, just th sort of the stigma that still surrounds smoking. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, good information. Um, so let's shift gears a little bit and... Tell us about um, your events that are coming up. Um, let's start with the Fresh Air Day Cruise. So that's a great event. We are actually in our 21st year of doing our Eager Breathers Fresh Air Day Cruise. That is happening on Thursday, September 8th on the wonderful MS Mount Washington on Lake Winnipesaukee. Mm. And uh, so this cruise is really for people with COPD or other chronic lung conditions. And it's a really wonderful afternoon out on the lake. We provide a buffet lunch. There's an onboard health fair, live music. And this being our 100th anniversary, I've also heard there might be a birthday cake involved. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. So it's, it's a great opportunity, again, for people to get out and enjoy the day together mm -hmm. and being able to meet other individuals that are living with COPD and that get it. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, a big thing that uh, people are looking for is to connect with others that know what they're going through. Yeah, that must be so good for them mentally because they're, they're with people they can relate to, but they're also having fun, so they're getting a break from the disease. Exactly. It's, you know, it's not a clinical setting. We do have a doctor on board, but it's an opportunity for them to get, again, resources and information that they may otherwise not receive. It's a day out to have fun. Like you said, it's a day out on the lake, something that ordinarily they may not be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, the other opportunity that the cruise affords them is the chance to sort of practice being out for the day knowing that you know they can practice using their oxygen in a different location, knowing oh that we have a doctor on board. So maybe that will help them um, if they want to do other ventures out with family at other times. It might give them some confidence that, okay, I, I was able to manage on the cruise. And Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to people who think that, well, I'm on oxygen, so now I can't go anywhere. I have to stay home all the time. I think for that, you know, it's, again, working with your health care providers and your doctor to make sure that you have all of you know, the necessary tools and equipment and everything is up to date. Um, but certainly just to try it and they can contact us. If they have any questions about or any apprehension about going on something like the cruise, they can always call Breathe New Hampshire and we're, we're happy to talk with them and go through the different steps of what they can do to, to make it easier on them. That's great. And something to look forward to. Absolutely. So we usually have a few hundred people on the cruise. And wow. it's a really, yeah, it's a really wonderful afternoon. So um, if anyone's interested or has a loved one that might be interested in it, uh, individuals can go on by themselves or with family members. And then we also have several groups from local hospitals that come on board as well. Mm -hmm. Must be a great opportunity for them to share information, too. Absolutely. With each other. Absolutely. No matter how you might happen to be feeling, this this always makes me feel better, right? It's boogie music. That it is. <laughs> boogie on down. Boogie. Showing my age yeah, here. Three th <laughs> yeah. Little boogie. Uh, 336 is the time. Uh, Coach Carol Phillips is here. It's the Ask Coach Carol segment of the program. And I understand you have a new uh, article out there. I do. Um, it's on my blog. It's a blog post on my website, AskCoachCarol.com, and it's called Your Exercise Dozen. So it's 12 quick tips on things to remember when you're exercising. So All exercising right. and staying healthy and staying away from those cigarettes and whatever else. Avoiding 
the the lung conditions that we're talking about right. today. So back to Alyssa. I'd love to talk about um, the next event that you have coming up, which is the Breathe New Hampshire Annual Fairways for Airways Golf Classic. Thank you, Carol. Yes, that is coming up also in September on Monday, September 26th, and that will be held at the exclusive Lake Winnipesaukee, Winnipesaukee Golf Club in New Durham, and um, that really is a great event. It's a uh, we have foursomes. It's a scramble format. There's a live, uh, silent auction, a raffle, breakfast and lunch, and it's really a great day to play on a, a private course and for a good cause. Yeah, and I, I love this part about the course features 700 mountain acres of play. It's a beautiful course, and again, it's a great opportunity for those, you know, even if they're avid golfers or they want to try golfing, you know, they've just taken up golfing. It's just a great day out, and um, we hope that people will join us, and certainly there's still room if you want to sign up and register. And what's the um, website and phone number if they want to sign up? Sure. If they'd like to sign up or have any questions, our local telephone number is 669-2411, and they can find us online at breathenh.org. Okay, great. And the 800 number is 1-800-835-8647. And if people want to call in and ask Alyssa a question or share something um, about COPD or any other breathing problem, give us a call. 1-800, sorry, I'm giving the wrong number here. Don't give the wrong number. No, sorry. 1-866-823-1077. And the first caller will get a free copy of my book. Um, So that, that sounds like fun. Yeah, and I think that both that event and the cruise are, again, great events that are coming up this fall and things that, um, you know, people can get involved with. So if they, you know, have COPD and they want a day out, there's the cruise. And if they're a golfer or they want to be outside for the day and enjoy the fresh air at the golf club, that's also a great event. Okay, so the golf event is Monday, September 26th, begins at 8 a.m. with a light breakfast. And um, you also have another event that you wanted to mention today. So this being our 100th anniversary, uh, we will be celebrating our centennial celebration at our annual Night of Thanks, and that's not until November, um, but that will be at the Manchester Country Club on Thursday, November 3rd. And that's a great event. Last year I was the keynote. Thank you so much for asking me to speak at that wonderful event. And to, to have an event where you're honoring the volunteers, that is so important because you need you need volunteers, especially, you know, if you're um, doing the support groups and the classes and, um, you know, it takes a village, right? It does, certainly. We're a small organization, and uh, so we couldn't do it without our volunteers. We have about 200 active volunteers that help us throughout the year, and they are they are the backbone of the organization. They are out there helping us, whether it's our events, our activities, uh, bringing in new information helping us in the office with various tasks. So we couldn't do it without our volunteers, and and so it only makes sense to recognize them and thank them for all of their hard work and dedication. And that's Thursday, November 3rd, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Manchester Country Club in Bedford. Exactly. Outstanding. So we're talking about COPD for the the, uh, better part of this show. Uh, and there has to be varying degrees, I would have to think, of COPD. Um, can, can you go through that? I mean, different uh, phases, different stages. Uh, does, can it get better? Uh, how can it get better? Sure. Well, it is a, it is a chronic condition, um, and it is a progressive condition. So there is mild COPD. And again, those people might have mild C- COPD that might not even know it yet uh, because the symptoms are not adverse enough or they're not feeling again like something that they should call their doctor about but there is mild all the way to severe COPD Um, and it is you know there are things that people can do to manage their disease there is pulmonary rehabilitation there is oxygen there are various treatments using inhalers and so forth Um, the disease does actually not get better there's no cure at this time um, and there are really no steps to reverse the effects of COPD but there are things that people can do uh, to help them breathe better. Um, we talked earlier about exercising a little bit and helping to improve their lung function. Um, so there are things that people can do, but certainly there's mild, moderate, severe COPD, sure. of course. And I would have to think the, the amount of exercise they can do depends on the severity of their COPD. 
Absolutely. I mean, we uh, have a program actually that we just wrapped up this spring called Team Orange, and that is really um, to encourage people to, to move more and breathe better. And it's a, a motivating program where they track what they're exercising. And we had a couple of groups from hospitals. They have different themes every year, but one of them was the presidential pacers. So they virtually, um, you know, paced their way from the New Hampshire State Capitol down to the White House and back. Um, so it's really neat things, again, those group settings, getting people together, mm -hmm. um, that camaraderie and that support that right. they build from each other, and they also are motivated by each other. There's certainly a little competitive edge with some of the folks as well. And that's a great point, Ken, because people might have to change what they're used to doing yeah. instead of, okay, you know, they're used to doing a certain exercise and now they have COPD and it's difficult for them. Instead of just stopping and saying, well, I can't exercise anymore, trying different types of exercise, but also maybe the exercises that are more aerobic mm -hmm. might be more problematic for them, but it's still important for them to do strength training because you don't want those muscles to atrophy. Absolutely, and I think that's also where yoga comes into play. I mean, there's we talked about there's great benefits of yoga, but really doing something, and I think the, the, the thought is that, again, People think, oh, I can't exercise anymore. I just have to stop altogether. So the goal is to keep people moving in whatever way that they that makes sense for them. And I'm sure the um, the environment makes a difference too, whether it's hot or cold, humid or not humid. Well, um, and sure enough, with this heat wave we're having, that certainly impacts people, and it Im impacts all of us as far as the air quality and breathing. But with people with uh, COPD and especially those on oxygen, these are really difficult days to be outside. Mm -hmm. um, so the thought of leaving their house or going out and exercising is really challenging. Um, and so the weather can certainly impact the, you know, if it's really cold or really hot, um, it definitely impacts breathing. So maybe if somebody's used to running and then it's hot and humid, then they can join a gym. So maybe the gym that's air-conditioned might be more comfortable for them breathing-wise so that they can continue to exercise. It's all about doing what makes sense for them. So, you know, even with at-home exercising, you know, still doing something. Um, there's so many different videos now on YouTube and workout videos yep. and so forth. So it's really working with the environment that they're in and what makes sense for them. Um, so if getting outside and going for a walk in their neighborhood, if it's not a good day to do that, maybe there's another way they could do that, such as going to the gym on a treadmill, um, looking to their local Y, or maybe some other community groups that they can get involved with. I'm just thinking even just measuring how many trips down your hallway makes a mile. There I'm just go. thinking of my house as a ranch. It's like, how many times do I have to walk my hallway to make a mile? <laughs> and how many times is it? I don't know. I oh, just, just, it it out here. just sitting here, I'm getting smarter. It's like, well, that, if I had to, I could just walk up and down my She's hallway. She's going to measure That's it later homework. today. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let, let us know. Get, get back to us on that one. I'll let Jay know. He'll, he'll, now he'll be curious. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure he will be. Uh, 345 is the time. Well, we are heading down the home stretch of the uh, Coach Carroll segment. Ask Coach Carroll here on the Pulse. It's every other week. Carroll stops by with some uh, great guests like today. And uh, we'll sort of wrap things up with Alyssa now. Uh, Carol? Yeah, so Alyssa, tell us a little bit about the free screenings that are available in the area. So uh, next month on Monday, August 8th, we will be partnering with the Manchester Community Health Center. They will be having uh, a day with a health fair and family fun day. So we'll be offering a uh, free spirometry screening there. So if you or someone you know is experiencing maybe some of the symptoms or you're having some coughing and shortness of breath, you can come on down and um, get a free spirometry screening. It takes about a minute. And right there you'll get some results, which then you might decide you want to contact your doctor or maybe you're fine. So again, it is a, a free screening and also going into November, which is COPD Awareness Month, there will be some other screenings that will be happening around the state as well. Terrific. Better for people to know than not know. Absolutely. So they can take, take care of themselves and make their breathing a little bit easier. Terrific. Absolutely, sure. And what's your contact information again, your website and your phone number? So the phone number is 669-2411 and online at breathenh.org. Alyssa, thank you so much for being with us today. This is great information. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Carol. Thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. Um, so today's closing quote, ironically, or I should say 
coincidentally, not really coincidentally. You I, planned it this I way. Planned you it, planned yeah, it this I planned way. it See, this you way. Do, well, you do a lot of homework. <laughs> I do. It is um, by Amit Ray. Breathe is the finest gift of nature, or breath. Sorry, breath. Used to saying breathe all after all hour. All right, take two. <laughs> yep, take two. Uh, breath is the finest gift of nature. Be grateful for this wonderful gift. There you go. And uh, Breathe New Hampshire. Thanks, uh, Alyssa Thompson, the director of programs at Breathe New Hampshire. And uh, the cruise is coming up, uh, up again on uh, September 8th, right? Thursday, September 8th. For more information, you can uh, contact Breathe New Hampshire. You can call yourselves Breathe New Hampshire or Breathe NH. Breathe New Hampshire. Oh, okay. Okay. We got it right? You did. Yeah, how about that? that that's one for the books.